when it's pitch black and uh, you have to refill the unit because it's uh, bone dry yeah it's a mess it's really annoying and especially when it's cold I'd rather not do it so I'm going to install a fuel sensor that's actually capable of measuring the fuel and it's going to give me a warning on the phone that I have to refill it otherwise I'm going to get cold in the night so I'm using one of these uh, Y28 5 volts uh, I had a smaller one but that didn't work perfectly fine this one does it sees that there's liquid and when there's no liquid it stops sending a message so it's actually detecting capable of detecting the fuel inside of a fuel tank it's all running on an ESP32 C3 so this is Northern Lights it's designed by me and my daughter and uh, it's called Northern Lights because we went to uh, Finland and we saw actually the Aurora Borealis it was freaking cold and we had actually a diesel heater so yeah Northern Lights so the fuel level is right there and this thing should react when it's come in contact with fluid yeah, it's right on the money. But from the top part of the sticker, all the way to the top part right there. So maybe it's even better to put it right there. <laughs> Super glue and contacts mount. But I'm gonna try it. <laughs> so I'm gonna stick it right there. Yeah, that's gonna hold <laughs> most definitely. <laughs> it's already dry. Obviously, it's gonna say it's full because yeah, it's pretty much full. A little bit of nano tape, stick to the wiring, and uh, yeah, I need to find a box and close it all, make it watertight. So I know that there are fanboys of these things because they're using it in uh, campouts and all that, and it's perfectly fine, but going through all the settings and finding the menus it's a pain in the ass so having something like this and just hey fuel tank is full how many hours did it run uh, body temperature calibration uh, engineer mode startup protocol shutdown protocol well which level do you want to select um, it's way more in your face than that thing and also looks a little bit nice I think so if you like these type of mods and yeah you want to see more please subscribe it's gonna help the channel grow and uh, it's gonna allow me to put links in the description box which is a very very nice thing to do so YouTube is a weird place these days especially with the amount of ads uh, obviously because my channel is way below a thousand followers I don't get paid for anything and I also don't want to get paid. I'd rather have a real personal experience and I'm going to share that. But the annoying part is the amount of requests for links to the parts. YouTube doesn't allow a channel with less than a thousand followers to put any links in the comment section or in the description box. It's really annoying. They do allow blowing shit up, making toxins. Uh, they even show how to make a uh, certain type of explosives that you can use for well, blowing shit up or uh, making and distilling alcohol that's all perfectly fine or placing ads in the video but sharing a link when you're less than a thousand followers yeah that's a big no-no so we run home assistant inside the house but also in our greenhouse so I own a business and we produce fruits and vegetables for the communities and the shops and those really big uh, water tanks and concentrate all of them have uh, level sensors in order to measure the water level and if it's below the level I get a signal so we have to refill it and I've been running that for about seven years or so and funny story uh, a couple of years ago a guy came over from another business I'm not gonna name the names so it's, it's a really big name and they want to sell a product that's actually measuring the water level inside of a fuel tank, which this thing actually does. And he was sticking on, on a barrel and he was looking at the sensor, but first of all, he didn't know what the hell it was, so he wasn't really asking about it. But then he was too curious and, what's that thing? So it measures water level. 
Really? That small thing? Yep. Is it reliable? Sure is. How much does it cost? Well, seven euros and fifty cents, eh? Seriously? Yeah. How much is yours? Fifteen hundred bucks. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> so the fuel sensor is stable, everything else I turned it off. Um, but it's turned on 10 hours ago and it's still working. So uh, let's probably lose this one and should say that it's off. Yeah, immediately off. So I do get it when people say, you don't need it, it's not necessary. Huh? Uh, obviously uh, if you're running this thing on a five liter internal fuel storage or six or seven whatever um, you probably don't need it because you run it out within a couple of days and if you're not smart enough to fill it up within a couple of days you're gonna get cold but the bigger the tanks the more you're gonna forget about it because you don't have to check it every day and uh, eventually it will run dry and then you have to prime it again and you have to fill it up it's a pain in the ass to deal with, especially in the middle of the freaking night. So having a sensor on the fuel cell or on the uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, jerry can or whatever, makes my life way more easy. Especially when I know for a fact that when the signal is on, I have three hours left of three liters left, which is about actually uh, two days or so. Let me be clear, these uh, sensors, they work through plastic really thick plastic by the way but they don't work through metals but again they don't work through metal and then you're better off using a pressure gauge and you can convert pressure into liters or gallons and uh, i think that's a better option solution but when you're using a plastic fuel tank or uh, a jet again well you just stick one on it you don't have to drill a hole because when you drill holes in plastic it's going to crack and eventually you get a rip in it and it's, it's just a bad idea so sticking something onto a jerry can is the best solution i don't know how these things are called but we use them in boats to keep water away from electrical equipment and to keep the the plugs safe that it don't short out and all that i've been using them for multiple years so i've never seen them on fail and it's all fitted by compression fittings and rubber gaskets so it's not gonna let any moisture in it so I'm using nano tape. Um, it's really cheap, but the stuff sticks to everything. And so the tank's in, and it's active. So now the only thing I have to do is uh, put this thing in. It's Wi-Fi connected, and I turned it on about four minutes ago. So it's actually reading everything perfectly fine. So the Bluetooth functionality on these things—they're they're horrible. Um, they're actually horrible within a couple of meters inside of this house. I lost connection. So, yeah. Just for safety, everything is run on the ESP32 logic itself. So I don't run anything on Home Assistant. That's a very cool way to do stuff. But when Home Assistant fails or Wi-Fi fails with these types of projects, you don't want to see that thing stop in the middle of a run because it's going to catch fire. Or it's gonna do some weird shit. You should solder that. Loose wires, you should solder it. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. I can already hear the comments. You should solder it. If you don't solder it, the wires get loose. You should solder it. You get better connections. I know. Um, developing boards and putting sensors on it and then soldering it together and then you want to add another uh, sensor on it but then you have to change the pinouts because that's something that happens quite often with these projects uh, it's really annoying to change pinouts and already soldered so i rather use those uh, wires it's way easier in the beginning stages and when the esp32 is finished and all the sensors on it that i actually want on it and i have to still mount two more sensors on it then i'm going to solder it but for now, I'm just going to use it the way it is. Um, it's perfectly fine. There's not a lot of high current through it. Uh, it's on 5 volt, so I'm not really worried about it. Um, it's also fixed. There are no loose wires. It's all uh, joined. But yeah, soldering is the better option. But unless I mounted every sensor on it, 
I'm not gonna solve it. There you go.